So as a quick reminder about the syntax, please remember that these round brackets are necessary in C. They are not necessary in Python. You will actually see lots of Python programmers putting these round brackets. They might have come from a programming language like C or Java or C++ where these parentheses are necessary. So that's the interference in their minds. But keep in mind that for C, you absolutely must have these parentheses. It turns out that these curly brackets, in this case, are actually optional. Why? Because in this case, the body of this if statement has only one sentence in it, the print statement. But it's very, very highly recommended that you use these every time, even if the body of your if or your else conditions have only a single statement. The reason is, suppose you don't put any curly brackets and right now you have only this one statement. Suppose you decide, oh wait a minute, I want to print something else or I want to do something else in the body of this if condition. Your mind might say, oh well there's an indentation here, so I'll just put one more statement indented and it would be inside the if condition. No, in that case, the extra statement would no longer be inside the if condition because in C, if you don't put any curly brackets, only the very next statement can be inside the body of the if. The C compiler doesn't care about indentation. So the only way you can tell the C compiler that I want many statements to happen inside the body of the if is to put curly brackets. So I strongly recommend that you actually use curly brackets everywhere. It's just a safer programming style. Now, these curly brackets, as we have said, are absolutely necessary. In this case, of course, we have many statements inside the body of the main, but even if we only had the statement return zero, you still need to put curly brackets at the beginning and end of functions. Lastly, as I said, by convention, we return the value zero. I want to point out that there are some teaching resources, including some textbooks, that do not include this return zero. And instead of writing int main, they write void main. Now void is a special keyword that is available in C. It means that this particular function doesn't return anything. This, by the way, cannot be done in Python. Every Python function must return some object. If you don't write a return statement, that Python function will return a special object, none, but it must return a single object every time. But in C, you can write a function that doesn't return anything at all, and some textbooks and other teaching resources say you should write void main. Please don't do that. That is very, very poor programming style. A C program should be written this way, where it has an integer return value, and by convention, that return value should be a zero to indicate that there were no errors in executing that particular C program. Now let's actually try and compile and run this particular C program. So to compile this program, I am using a particular program called GCC, which stands for the GNU C compiler. And this particular compiler is taking this lecture12.c program and compiling it or converting it into an executable program. Now, by default on my Linux system, this produces a file called a.out. This particular file is machine code. If I try to read it, I will not succeed. I will not be able to understand it, but my computer can execute it. On a Windows machine, this file might be called something like a.exe. Now, when I ran this particular compilation command, I got a whole bunch of scary looking messages. These messages begin with the word warning. Now compiler warnings are not the same as errors. In particular, even though I got a warning, my compiler did produce an a.out executable, which I will show you I can later run. But what these warnings are telling me, the programmer, is that I might be doing something that is 
unintentional. In particular, these warnings are telling me that I'm trying to printf in decimal format, percent %d, something that perhaps isn't an integer. So this is telling me that percent %d means you're expecting an integer, but what you're actually giving me over there is ampersand %x, and ampersand %x is of a different type. It's not an integer, it's something called int star. And later we will see the difference between int and int star. Now notice that we got this strange negative value for the address. Well, that's to do with this warning. The exact connection is a little bit complicated, but for now I'm going to ignore this warning. It doesn't stop me from producing an executable program. And so down here, I'm actually going to run that executable. The file is called a.out. And this syntax dot forward slash is saying the a dot out that is living in the current directory, please execute that. I didn't have to say dot slash for running GCC because the GCC program actually doesn't live in my directory. It lives somewhere else, but my system knows where to find it. On many Linux systems, if you just say a dot out, uh, it might say, I don't know where to find this. So by saying dot forward slash a dot out, I'm saying the a dot out that was produced over here. If for some reason my compilation failed, I would not have had an a dot out. And then this might have produced an error. But now I can actually run this code and it does print some values. These values are different perhaps to the values you will see when you execute on Python Tutor. But the point is we get some integer values over here, and then we get negative. Remember, we were expecting positive, but now we know why this is happening. Lastly, when we do echo dollar question mark, we get the value zero because that's what our main function had returned. I'd like you to do a quick experiment, change that return value to something else, run your code on a terminal like this, and echo dollar question mark and see if you get a different value, the same value that you returned.